Hello everybody! In today's video, we will discuss HFS Plus file system, explore its structure and the changes that distinguish it from the previous version HFS. We will also analyze data recovery from an HFS Plus drive in terms of peculiarities and possible issues. Finally, we will compare performance and efficiency of different products in recovering data from HFS Plus volumes. Hello, friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. HFS Plus, or macOS Extended, was first presented back in January 1998, but it was developed as a test file system for operating system Copeland, which was never released. In the late 2002, Apple rolled out update 10.2.2, which added journaling to improve data reliability. It was easily accessible in server versions of macOS 10, but only through the command prompt interface from desktop clients. Beginning with macOS X version 10.3, journaling was included by default, and the volume containing the journal is known as HFSJ. HFS Plus Journal has finally become the main file system that Apple uses on its Mac products. A journal operating system keeps a log file or journal of changes which helps to recover the hard disk quicker after failures and accelerates the work of time machine. This file system type is perfect for Mac internal disks and backup disks, but very inconvenient for external disks that would be connected to computers running other operating systems. HFS Plus can be seamlessly integrated with GNU Linux, but it is still incompatible with Windows. To help Windows recognize this file system, additional software is required. Apple developed HFS Plus to replace HFS, the main file system for Macintosh computers, so it can be seen as the enhanced version of HFS designed to improve the capabilities of macOS. The main distinction of HFS Plus is using the 32-bit architecture instead of the 16-bit in HFS. The older addressing system was a serious limitation by itself, as it didn't support work with volumes containing more than 65,536 blocks. For example, on a 1 GB disk, the allocation block size under HFS is 16 KB, so even a 1 byte file would take up the entire 16 KB of disk space. Just as its predecessor, HFS Plus uses the so-called B-tree to store a major part of metadata. HFS Plus volumes are divided into sectors, called logical blocks in HFS, usually 512 bytes in size. One or more sectors make up an allocation block. The number of allocation blocks depends on the total size of the volume. The 32-bit addressing allows to use over 4,294,967,292 4, clusters compared to the 65,536 available for 16-bit. In comparison, the two file systems differ by the following. File name length in HFS – 31, in HFS Plus – 255. File name encoding in HFS Mac Roman in HFS Plus Unicode. Record size in HFS 512 bytes in HFS Plus 4 kilobytes. And the maximum file size has increased uh, from 2 to the 31st in HFS to 2 in the 63rd in HFS Plus. HFS Plus volumes are divided into sectors called the logical blocks in HFS usually 512 bytes in size. These sectors are then grouped together into allocation blocks, which can contain one or more sectors. The number of allocation blocks depends on the total size of the volume. HFS Plus uses a larger value to address allocation blocks than HFS – 32 bits rather than 16 bits. To manage the process of data allocation on the disk, HFS Plus stores special service information known as metadata. The following elements are most important for the proper operation of the file system and are of special interest when searching for missing data. The HFS boot blocks, located in sectors 0 and 1. The volume header, which is located in the second sector. 
it stores a lot of data about the volume, for example, the size of allocation blocks, a timestamp that indicates when the volume was created or the location of other volume structures, such as in the catalog file or extend overflow file, catalog file, extend overflow file, file etc. The volume header is always located in the same place. The allocation file it contains data on occupied and vacant allocation blocks. Each allocation block is represented by one bit. A zero value means the block is free, and a one value means the block is in use. Sometimes this structure is referred to as bitmap. The allocation file can change the size and doesn't have to be stored contiguously within a volume. The catalog file. It stores a major part of data on allocation of files and folders on the disk. The catalog file is a B tree that contains records for all the files and directories stored in the volume. The extends overflow file is another B tree element that records the allocation blocks that are allocated to each file as extents. Each file record in the catalog file is capable of recording eight extents for each fork of a file. Once those are used, additional extents are recorded in the extents overflow file. Bad blocks are also recorded as extents in the extents overflow file. The attributes file. Such elements are used, for example, to control access. The attributes file can store three different types of records. Inline data attribute records that store small attributes. Fork data attribute records that contain references to a maximum of eight extents that can hold larger attributes. Extension attributes that are used to extend a fork data attribute record when its eight extent records are already used. The standup file is meant to be used by other non macOS systems that lack HFS or HFS Plus support. The second to last sector contains the alternate volume header. And the last sector in the volume is reserved for further use. Recovering data from HFS Plus is more difficult than from other file systems. One of the aspects causing difficulties is that HFS Plus uses B-trees to store most volume metadata on allocation of files, and after a file is removed, the B-tree is updated immediately, so the information on where the removed file was located is lost at once. Our program lets you see the storage device and the HFS Plus structure in Windows without using any extra software or drivers. While running a full analysis scan, its algorithm allows to exclude these elements when searching for lost data and recover the information we need. If you choose a fast scan, the program reads the volume header and gains access to the catalog file. It finds the journal file, reads it to the memory, and analyzes all entries concerning removed files. If the blocks related to such files are not overwritten yet, it will read them and recover the data. This method lets you recover the file completely. And even if overwriting has taken place, the file data can still be found in virtual memory, that is, in the paging file. The algorithm behind full analysis allows the program to exclude certain elements while searching for deleted data, rebuild the disk structure, and display the lost data. Using standardized tests as an example, we will explore how it works, study different scenarios of data loss, and compare the Hetman product with other popular data recovery tools. For our benchmarking assessment, we have selected several popular data recovery tools. They are Hetman Partition Recovery, RStudio, EasyUS Data Recovery Wizard, Disk Grill, UFS Explorer, and Recover. As we examined the tools more closely, we had to exclude Recover from the list. It doesn't support HFS Plus file system. In the end, we will compare efficiency of the five specialized utilities. All right, here we go. There is a computer with macOS Catalina installed on it and a hard disk divided into several partitions that is going to be the test disk. Let's copy some data there. For example, photos, videos, documents. Now let's remove some of the files and shut down the computer. We will perform the tests on another computer running Windows. Let's connect the HFS Plus disk and start the testing with Hetman Partition Recovery. As you can see, the program recognized the disk with HFS Plus file system properly. Open it. In such removal scenario, a fast scan will suffice. 
let's check the results. Here are all the detected files and folders. The ones that have been removed are marked with the red cross. All the files are displayed in the preview window and available for recovery. The disk structure is retained and all files and folders can be located easily. The program has completed this test successfully and met the challenge just as it should. Let's try another candidate, RStudio. It also displays the disk, its name and file system properly. Open it. Here are our files and folders. For some reason, it doesn't display the folder one movie. Most likely because the program couldn't find it. Also, some folders are shown twice and marked as deleted, though they are not. All removed files can be viewed and are available for recovery. Here is the verdict. The program completed the test but failed to find one folder and some other files are duplicated. Generally, the final result is a little worse in comparison with Hetman Partition Recovery. The next one on the list is EasyUS. Start the program. It also displays the disk, its name and file system properly. However, there is no option for quick scan. As soon as you try to open a file, it triggers full analysis, so we've just found the first downside of this product. When the analysis is finally over, we can see there are 259 files detected. The program displays all files and folders. All files can be viewed, but it is difficult to understand which elements were removed and which are still on the disk. Also, some files are duplicated and you can't view them. Here is the verdict. This product can find all the files, both deleted and those still on the disk, but it would be more convenient to have a sort of marking to distinguish between the two types. Some files got duplicated, but the program has completed this test successfully. Another one to go is Disk Drill. If you have more than one drive on your computer, you'll have to do some searching first. Alright, here is the drive we are going to use. Surprisingly, the program only displays its size, but doesn't say it's HFS. Start the scan. QuickScan is unable to find any removed data and it only displays what is still on the disk. Only a deeper scan can help us see what this product can do. Look, it has found some files. The disk structure is lost as well as file names and there are some duplicates as well. They are arranged by type into various folders and it's hard to tell which of them were removed. Also, it's not clear if the, if the program would be able to recover all data. Videos and documents are unavailable for preview, so I can't say they can be recovered. Uh, by judging by the file size, we can hope the files will be restored. Summing up, this program has completed the test as well, but so far its results are the worst. Also, some files are unavailable for preview and the deeper scan takes quite a long time. UFS Explorer is the next product to be tested. Start the program. It can recognize the disk and its file system, but somehow it doesn't display the disk name. Open the disk and see no information on the deleted files at all, and there is no quick scan option either. Alright, let's run a regular scan. The program has found the deleted data. The disk structure and file names are retained. The removed files are shown in a different color and can be previewed. All folders can be located easily. The only disadvantage is that you can't view documents. Photos and videos have no preview issues. Talking of document recovery, there is much to be desired. The verdict is here. This product has coped with the task, but there are some difficulties in dealing with documents. In the end, the top tools are Hetman Partition Recovery and EaseUS, as they both don't have any issues when analyzing the test disk. The only downside in EaseUS is that it lacks the quick scan option. 
Other utilities have minor drawbacks. RStudio failed to detect one folder, while Disk Drill and UFS Explorer couldn't preview certain files. In the following tests, we will erase file system elements one by one. A volume header, alternate volume header, header node, and index node of the second level. Erase the volume header. In HFS Plus, the volume header is located in the second sector from the beginning and in the second to last sector, that is, from the end of the volume. So that's why we are going to erase the main header in the second volume at the beginning of the disk, then run the analysis to see how the tools selected for the benchmark would perform. All right. The volume header is removed, and then we start Hetman Partition Recovery, which can display the disk, its name, and file system at once. Open the disk. Result. Disk 1, folders 29, files 136. The same result that we've seen uh, in, pre in the previous test. The disk structure, file names, and locations are restored, all files can be previewed and are available for recovery. The program has completed the task successfully. RStudio. Start the program. It finds the disk and displays its name and file system correctly. Open the disk to see the same result as before. The program is unable to find one folder with a video file and some folders got duplicated. Let's see what EasyUS can do. The program can recognize the disk, but without its name and file system type. OK, let's scan it. The same result again – 243 files and some files got duplicated. Now let's start scanning the disk with Disk Drill. In the end, the same picture as before. Files are scattered over folders, no previews for documents and videos. I guess this test might be the last one where we still use this particular product. Results are unimpressive at all, and there seems to be no use testing anymore. We already know what to expect, and this tool ranks the last in our benchmark. UFS can recognize the disk, its file system and size, but fails to detect its name. Let's scan it. The program shows the same result as in the previous test. Documents are still unavailable for preview, but the other things are OK. For the next test, we will delete the second part of the header. Let's run Hetman Partition Recovery. The program displays the disk, but without showing the name of our file system. All we know is the capacity. Open the disk. As you can see, Quick Scan is not available now. Select Full Analysis, set the file system to HFS Plus, and wait until it is over. The same result, though under a different condition. One disk, 29 folders, 136 files. The program managed to detect the disk, recognize its name and file system. The disk structure and file names are retained. Everything is available for preview. The task is completed successfully. Our studio can recognize the disk, but can't display its name and file system type. Quick scan is not available too. Scan the disk and set HFS. The program was unable to find certain folders. Now is US. 
It can see the disk but fails with its name and file type, just as in the previous tests. The program shows the same result as before and some files are duplicated. However, all data is available for recovery. UFS Explorer It shows the disk as unknown without any name or file system type. This time, result is no different. The data is found, but documents cannot be previewed. In the next test, we will remove B-tree nodes, index node, header node leaf, and node. Hetman Partition Recovery comes first. The program can recognize the disk but can't display its name and file system type. We scan it only to see the same result we've seen many times today. One disk, 29 folders, 136 files. The program managed to detect the disk, recognize its name and file system. As you can see, all files are available. RStudio. Start the program. It can recognize the drive and that is already good enough. Scan it. The only suitable option is HFS, because HFS Plus is missing, so check it. The program managed to detect the disk, recognize its name and file system. Open the disk. Similarly to the previous tests, the program was unable to find certain folders. The rest of the data has been located, the disk structure and file names are retained. Everything is available for preview. Now is US. Run the program. The disk is detected, but it's missing both its name and file system. The duplicated file issue is still present. Everything is available for preview and recovery. Finally, UFS Explorer. It shows the disk as unknown volume. Configure the scan and start it. The program can detect the file system and retain the disk structure. All files and folders have been located, the only downside being that documents are not available for preview again. In the final test, we will remove index node of the second level from the disk, in addition to all that we have erased before. In other words, we will remove all B-trees. Now run Hetman Partition Recovery. Here is the disk. No name or file system. Let's scan the disk with full analysis. HFS Plus. The result is a bit different. One disk, 29 folders, 134 files. Here is our test disk with HFS Plus. All right. All files are available. Check the folders. Everything is OK. The disk structure and disk names are retained. Everything is available for preview. All you have to do is to save the recovered files. The program has completed all the tests with excellent results. Now, let's try RStudio. Start the program and run the scan. The program managed to detect the disk, recognize its name and file system. Everything is the same size as it was in the previous test. 
The program was unable to find certain folders, but the overall result is quite good. Now the final test for EaseUS. Start the program. No changes here. Let's scan the disk. All photos, videos and documents are present, available for preview and recovery. The result is as good as before. The last tool in the final test is UFS Explorer. It says we have an unknown disk. Alright, scan it and don't forget to check the file system type option. Here is the result. The disk structure and file locations are retained. Photos and videos are available for preview, but documents aren't. Uh, let's have a look at the folders. One video can't be previewed, but the other directories are fine. Summing up, we can say that this tool is a bit worse than RStudio, which failed to find some folders but was able to preview all files without exception. Now, let's draw the bottom line. We have four products that completed all tests successfully and one more product that didn't make it to the final because it failed to display almost half of the recovered files in the preview window. From among the top 4 tools, the choice is yours, but there is something I'd like to add. The algorithm used in our product allows to retain the folder structure and file names which makes it easier to search for certain data and saves your time. Also, it managed to find all the data that the disk used to contain. In addition, our program lets you create a disk image and then recover data from there, which is the industry standard for dealing with faulty drives. Another favorite, EasyUS, has very good results too, but it doesn't offer this option. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck!